True Followers and the members of the YWC. JC Styles here. Brian Crazy. F and True Wrestling back with our SummerSlam prediction. Uh, sorry, SummerSlam review. Guys, it's been a really long weekend here at F and True Wrestling, so we're just going to give you the results right off the bat. Two new champions crowned. Two new champions crowned, exactly. Well, actually, three new champions crowned. Yeah. We will go into a little more detail. You saw the title. You want to know what happened. Apologize for the background noise. We're going to make this quick. We're getting the torrential downpour here in Connecticut. But unfortunately, my little guys are asleep downstairs, and we would wake them up with this video. Yeah. So we can't, you know, fatherhood first, wrestling second. Yeah. So let's start it off. We get a surprise match to start off the Which night. Which was supposed to be originally a one-on-one -on -one match between Rey Mysterio versus The Miz. Which at last minute, I guess, was uh, s scheduled as an impromptu six-man tag. We saw Kofi Kingston, Rey Mysterio, and John Morrison take on the team of The Miz, R-Truth, and Alberto Del Rio. Albert. Yes, 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 yes. I was thinking about Del Rio a little later on. We'll get to that. But yes, it was a great six-man match. Three versus three. Uh, they were tagging in and out. This was not a tornado match for you guys that did not see it at home. And uh, just beautiful contest. It just simply was. Yeah, I mean, there was a couple of great spots in the match here and there. You know, some really great wrestling. We saw uh, John Morrison do a corkscrew plancha. We saw an attempt at a double 619, but the Miz kind of ducked out of the way. We see, uh, we see Mysterio go for the 619 again on R Truth. We see Kofi take out ADR on the outside. John Morrison takes out. I'm sorry, no, we saw Kofi take out The Miz on one side. We saw Morrison take out ADR, ADR for, and then Mysterio hits the 619 frog splash off the top rope for the win for the team. It was a great match. It really was. JC summed up pretty much how the end of it ran, uh, ran down, and it was just a fantastic match. I do got to say, I really enjoyed it. I'm glad they made it three on three versus the one on one scheduled match. It just added a little bit more to SummerSlam here tonight. Uh, for our next match of the night, we had... Uh, I believe it was Sheamus versus Mark Henry. That is correct. And the tagline for WWE.com for this match was Strongman versus Warrior. Exactly. Or Sheamus put it, uh, you know, Mark Henry is Shamu and he's the great white and he's coming for him. And, uh, kind of a BS finish though for this match. Kind of a BS finish, but, but a great match. Sheamus was the only guy that's taken Mark Henry to his full potential yes. in the last six months. Easily. Easily. Because you got to remember, for storyline purposes, he was fighting show injured. He yeah. fought team injured. Yeah. And now you got a guy, Sheamus, who they're really trying to push. I mean, this is the guy that took out Triple H from the game yes. for close to a year. Yeah, Triple H is the game, but he took him out of the game. Yeah, That's he what took I'm him saying. out of the, the business. Exactly. And, I mean, Sheamus deserves this push. I think he really lost a lot of momentum. Um, last year when he won the King of the Ring, I think that kind of stalled his career out for a little bit. Remember, they ditched the King Sheamus, and he started becoming successful once again. Like JC said, kind of had a bullshit finish. Mark Henry won by countout. Yeah, the series of move maneuvers that followed up, up uh, via the countout, we saw kind of Mark Henry do a uh, body slam on the turnpost. Like, he ran and put his spine, and then he kind of did like an Oklahoma slam through the barricade. And uh, that led to the, disc the, the, the the count out on Sheamus. Yeah, exactly. He hits this huge slam, and it was funny. If you're watching the footage, you see this guy standing at ringside. With a red he, shirt. With a red shirt. And it, it must have been uh, event personnel yeah. or something. And he sees these two guys coming. He's like, <laughs> He runs, and literally, he must have slipped, and he slid at least three feet. And man, it was just hilarious. I mean, he just made it out of the way before. Yeah. They, they would have plowed him. I mean, he would have been done. Yes. And, uh, yeah, Mark Henry made it back to the ring. Sheamus was so close, maybe 10, 15 feet away from the ring, gets counted out. Yeah. Um, Mark Henry just walked away without incident, though. Yeah. He didn't try to attack Sheamus post-match or anything, so I really have a feeling that there will be more to this feud. Exactly. For the next match, I think we jumped into the... We saw uh, Daniel Bryan versus Wade Barrett. Was the deepest match first, or was that first? That was first. That was first, yes. okay. Uh, we saw Dan my both of my boys, you know, I enjoy watching these guys wrestle. I was big on Wade Barrett when he won NXT. My original pick for NXT was Daniel Bryan for season one. But the way that they played out this NXT role, as we all know, was the Nexus. Uh, Daniel Bryan was kicked out of Nexus, quote-unquote storyline. But behind the scenes, 
he was let go from the WWE for being too aggressive. Yeah, with that whole while uh, first night Raw viewers choice, yeah. the whole Justin Roberts situation. Choking pink tie. Which I will note uh I do want to note is tonight when Barrett came out, he had his robe and the yeah. rose, very reminiscent to his early days in NXT yeah. and how uh when he wrestled for FCW. Oh hell yeah. You know, uh, these guys put on such a great show for us. I mean, the feud started literally when Daniel Bryan won the Money in the Bank just earlier, uh, late last month. Uh, you know, and it was just a really good match. You know, you had these two guys building the feud up on SmackDown. You know, who was going to get the better hand. And in the end run, I mean, I didn't have any qualms with this match. I actually enjoyed it. It could have gotten eyed away from me because I'm both a Daniel Bryan and a Wade Barrett fan. Well, so, same here. I enjoy Wade Barrett. I enjoy Daniel Bryan. Uh, these guys both took each other to their limits at several points throughout this match. It was very close that both competitors uh, could have picked up the win. Daniel Bryan looked like he was firmly in the driver's seat at the end of this match, but momentum shifted. Barrett hit a huge clothesline by... Sorry about the lights, guys. Usually we've been filming a little bit different lately, uh, so the floodlight doesn't go off. They're on a motion sensor, but unfortunately we're stuck up on the porch due to the weather. If you just tuned in... We will switch sides. Yes. But, um, kids are sleeping in the house. Unfortunately, this is what we got to do. We apologize. Um, touching on that match just a little bit more, and we'll keep this going so we can get it up for you guys. Um, Barry hits the huge clothesline when Brian's up on the turnbuckle. Hits Wasteland. One, two, three. Barrett is your winner. Then we go into the Divas Eva match, match. where we see Kelly Kelly come down to the ring with Eve Torres, and she goes against Beth Phoenix, who's accompanied by Natalia. If you guys don't know, Beth Phoenix and Natalia have recently uh, taken heel turns. They are out for themselves. The, they say the days of the cute Divas are over. And uh, pretty you know, much, Beth it Phoenix up. brought Kelly Kelly to her limit. And Kelly yeah. Kelly had to pull every wrestling maneuver she knew out yeah. to get to get the win. Pretty much, you know, I was. This was the one match, uh, one of the two matches that I actually had a problem with because I don't know. I, I I'm. I was kind of hoping to see the Divas Division take a turn tonight and have them put the title on an actual. You know, I'm not. I'm not bashing. Don't take me. Take it the wrong way. But Beth Phoenix represents what the Divas Division used to be back in 2002, 2003, where they went out and they bought it. And they went hard, just like the knockout. Well, Beth Phoenix, Beth Phoenix could have stayed toe to toe with Lita. She could have yes. stood toe to toe with China. Trish, Trish, you know, and Ivory, and Jackie. Kelly, Kelly's a different generation of diva. Yes. She's a diva. Uh, Beth Phoenix fits more into the women's division yes. of the early 2000s, like JC said. But to keep it short and sweet, we won't dwell on it. Kelly, Kelly did retain her divas championship. For the next match, this is when it starts to get exciting. We see Christian go against Randy Orton. With the returning edge. edge. Huge. Uh, cut a promo, just to run down the promo real quick. He goes, I was so happy to go and, and, you know, and have to early retire because I was able to pass the torch to my best friend, Christian. Then he turns around and he goes, then I started becoming disappointed with what was going on. I agreed with you that, you know, Teddy Long made you defend the title five days after you won it in a ladder match. Then you lost it. Then you had to hide behind the clipboard. You you pissed and moaned, you bitch. You had and you lawyers. You hide behind lawyers. And then I didn't know that my best friend becomes became, became such a whiny crybaby bitch. Exactly. And he left the ring. And he just walked out. Um, then we go into a very good no disqual no hose bar match. Oh, it was an excellent match. But early on, Christian was gonna book. You know, yeah. he didn't take anything Edge said to fucking heart at no. all. And you know, he was like, screw it, I'm taking this title and I'm out of here. Randy Orton gets him out of the crowd, brings him back down, and that's when it really starts happening. We see a, a kendo stick come into play. We see tables come into play. We see the stairs come into play. A uh, very physical match, and uh, it was great. Christian, at closing moments, Randy went for the RKO and got hit in the side of the head with the signature cane. Christian jumped up on the second rope, turned the suckle, the second turnbuckle pad, uh, second turnbuckle rope. And went to go do a uh, twisting corkscrew, some body splash, whatever, it's late. Uh, and was met into an RKO on the setup steel stairs. Randy Orton is the new WWE World Heavyweight Champion. Turnbuckle. Stairs. RKO. Boom. Stairs. Right there. Exactly. Kind of like, almost like how Randy Orton won it the night, the, the, the week, the Friday after Money in the Bank, where Christian went up to the second top, the second turnbuckle, 
jumped off like for a crossbody, he was met with an RKO. But this time, he was met coming down on top of stairs. Yeah, exactly. He ate the steel stairs, uh, which was not the first time in the night, like I said a couple yes. of minutes ago, that these stairs came into play. Randy Orton is the new World Heavyweight Champion. I'd like to see Christian run with it a little bit more, but potentially maybe the storyline will continue and we'll see Rand, um, Christian become a three-time World Heavyweight Champion. Possibly, uh, or maybe we'll see something happen. Uh, maybe they'll step up another next new number one contender. Uh, you know, Barrett I like the show strong tonight. Maybe Barrett, Randy Orton. That's yeah. the dude that's been talked about for the last year. Exactly. And we then go into the main event because you so, know what, guys? The more we talk, the longer it takes. Yeah. And the we don't want you getting your news somewhere else. <laughs> the most anticipated match of the night, the most uh, talked about match, was the WWE. Undisputed Championship match. We had CM Punk, WWE Champion, going against John Cena, <coughs> WWE Champion. And, uh, you know, it was a very good match again. You know, we had Triple H as a special guest referee. At one point of the match, it looked like it was going to be a count out. Triple H went outside and he went no. And he threw them both back into the ring. Uh, we saw CM Punk and John Cena exchange some really good maneuvers. We saw John Cena hit a decapitating drop kick. Uh, we seen an exchange of AAs, go to sleeps, you know, and it was just a really good, solid match. I, I don't want to say it was better than the match at Money in the Bank, but it was close. Then we see CM Punk hit the go to sleep, and John Cena puts his rope on uh, his leg up on the on the bottom rope. Triple H counts to three. We see CM Punk win the WWE Championship, become the undisputed WWE Champion. Triple H walks up the ramp. CM Punk's on the second rope celebrating, is met by a clothesline from Kevin Nash and a jackknife. Kevin Nash, Diesel, Big Daddy Cool, comes down to the ring. Huge jackknife powerbomb. CM Punk is out. The music hits. Alberto Del Rio comes down. One. Well, actually, two, there was no music. Though. Three. And that was it. Alberto Del Rio is your new. WWE Champion. Well, like JC said, some controversy finishing that match. Cena I mean, really technically shouldn't have lost due to the foot being up. We're not yeah. seeing the marks here, but we do know the rules. I was of happy because he lost. But we do know the rules of professional yeah. wrestling. That's was, something yeah, we can't the referees, the referee's decision is final. Triple H True. even said, I didn't see your foot on the rope. And it's legitimate because Triple H wasn't looking at Cena's feet. He was looking at Cena's shoulders. Cena's shoulders were down. He counted one, two, three. CM Punk won, which at that point, CM Punk should have grabbed the title and walked up to the, to, to the thing just to avoid any controversial stuff like he did at Money in the Bank. But I have a feeling this is all just a ploy because WWE's touring Mexico. It's being talked about that they want to have someone as, you know, have someone as Rey or as Del Rio as the champion. Well, and tomorrow. Del Rio's now got to defend the title against Rey Mysterio yeah, tomorrow. Tomorrow night, exactly. That's, so, well, that's exactly what I was going to say. It's going to be Rey Mysterio, Alberto Del Rio tomorrow night, Monday Night Raw, for the WWE title. If Rey beats Del Rio, I will be happy because I would have been happy with CM Punk leaving the ring as champion. I'm not ha I like Del Rio, don't get me wrong. But the thing is, though, I don't know. There's just something about him. I just don't think he's really ready to hold the company long term. I think, I'll, I think uh, you know, I wasn't a big Miz supporter. I'm still not the hugest Miz supporter, but there was a great young guy who was up and coming. They gave him a chance and he ran with it. Let's see how Del Rio does. If we see this title reign uh, not turn out as well as we expected it, or as I expected it. Or it might just be a Kane, uh, a Kane one night thing. One night wonder. Who knows, tomorrow night maybe this controversy continues and now we're going to have CM Punk, John Cena, Del Rio, and Rey Mysterio in the title picture. Fatal four way at the next event. Really now? I, to be honest though, I kind of see, uh, I kind of see Diesel and CM Punk, the battle of the boys from Chicago. You know, uh, we see CM Punk from Chicago, Illinois. Diesel's from Detroit, Michigan. So let's see what happens, guys. Thank you for watching. We'll see you tomorrow night with the Monday Night Raw review, and uh, have a great week. Have a great weekend. Thanks for watching. Check out F and True Click, F and True Entertainment, Most Extreme Wrestling, and the Wrestling Revolution. Catch you later.